Welcome to the Dreamlands. We are back with another Homeworld Deserts of Karak multiplayer video. Uh, we're continuing on in the series of my build order, strategy, and playstyle tutorial videos for the various factions. And today we are going to take a look at a very aggressive coalition playstyle. Now I know my last video uh, that I posted in the series was coalition as well, uh, and generally I like to kind of alternate between the factions for these videos. However, that previous video was kind of a one-off thing just to address um, a new build order that kind of reared its ugly head. And I can confirm that that strategy works. I have been using it against the Kenef Blast Drone Rush, against a multitude of opponents, uh, and it definitely works. I've had a great deal of success using it, so I'm glad that I made it. However, that was kind of a one-off video and it deviated somewhat from my original plan for how this series was going to progress. So uh, now we're just gonna kinda continue on with the natural progression of the series. So the first two videos I showcased uh, economic opening build orders, which for both the Coalition and Galsian factions, which you can also use for Soban and Kenef respectively. Um, and I started with those because I think that practicing an economic focused build order is a great way to learn a faction. Um, it allows you to kind of play with the tech tree and play in kind of a more macro macro style. Now, as we move forward, we're going to get into a little bit more aggressive and more specific build orders, and we're gonna start here. So this is a coalition build order that is very, very strong. Uh, it's aggressive and it's focused on crippling your enemy's economy and production capability very early in the game. So that's what we're going to take a look at. And I've used this build order quite a lot. I've seen a lot of other really good players use it, and it's very strong. So um, yeah, we're going to jump right into a replay here and check it out. Now, I recommend for you to, again, as with all of my videos, use this as a starting point. This will give you a good place to uh, begin learning the basics of this build order and how to execute it and kind of the timings that you're going to look for uh, in game for when you should be pushing out and attacking and sort of how to transition into uh, different unit compositions and stuff like that. <clears throat> now, again, I'm no pro by any means. There may be a way to execute this particular strategy more efficiently, more effectively, and by all means, if you are watching this, Descara, A-game, whoever, top players, don't hesitate to leave some hints tips or advice in the comments and let me know how to improve upon this build order. But this is the way that I do it and this is the way I've found to make it pretty effective, pretty efficient. So we are going to jump in and just as we get in I want to give a big shout out to Megarith for being my opponent and kind of working with me to make sure that this video flows nicely uh, and is pretty well used as an educational tool so it is a little bit um, like I mean we tuned the combat a little bit so that we could showcase this build order uh, really clearly and really effectively so you guys will see it work quite well I'm just gonna pause the game real quick and of course you know the routine I am going to take away the tabs I'm not going to reveal the map I want you to see uh, everything that you'd see in a game now, right before I unpause, I just want to make this one quick distinction between pretty much almost all of the other build orders that I've shown and will continue to show, is that in this build order, I'm going to grab three salvagers and put them on CUs, and I'm going to get one on RUs right away. Because what we're essentially, like the overview of this build order is you're going to rush AAVs and then directly into strike fighters. And you're going to use your AAVs to, cr to push off any aggression and then immediately hit your opponent's resourcing. Um, with a very, very tight timing, you're going to be able to do a lot of economic damage. And then you're going to transition into strike fighters and use them to snipe one of your opponent's production cruisers. Now, this build order is ideal versus Galcian or Kenef. You can use it versus any faction, and it's very, very strong, but it's especially good versus... <clears throat> Galcian and Kenef because you not only damage their economy but cripple their production as well. Uh, seeing as how the majority of their production is centered on their production cruisers, they have the decentralized production. As I mentioned in my faction overview series, so 
being able to take out a production cruiser early is very, very devastating. All right, so I'm going to unpause the game and we're going to see I'm going to grab three salvagers onto CUs, one onto RUs. And that's how this build order begins. Then I'm going to queue up a one salvager, get light attack vehicle fabrication, and I'm going to recycle my starting base runner. All right, and as soon as my base runner is recycled, I'm going to queue up, once I have the money, three more salvagers. All right, and I'm going to have my rally point on RUs. The reason I'm doing this is I want to get RUs as quickly as possible to get me AAV fabrication, which costs 85 RUs as quickly as possible. Okay, so three salvagers on CUs, one on RUs, LAV fabrication, a second salvager on RUs, and then your fourth salvager on CUs. Now you will have two more salvagers coming out, and you want to send those right over to your closest wreck bulkhead, open it up, and get one on CUs and one on RUs. Okay, so that's the most important thing uh, to remember for this build order. I'm just going to pause it again real quick. So you have three on CUs, one on RUs, a second on RUs, and then a fourth on CUs. And then two extra salvagers, one on CUs and one on RUs at your closest wreck bulkhead. So in total, you're going to have five salvagers mining CUs and three salvagers mining RUs. As soon as LAV fabrication is finished, so, whoops, open the game, build three LAVs. And that should be able to spend just enough CUs that you can research AAV fabrication the moment it's available with 85 R, uh, RUs. So I'm going to build three a LAVs and I'm going to fan them out across the map in my usual fashion. One here, one here, and one here. And this is just to scout, okay? Put my power and weapons just in case of an attack. And as soon as AAV fabrication is researching, build two more salvagers and rally them over to this location. So now you are going to have saturated your first and second mining location and you're going to rush AAV tech. Now I have scouted my opponent. He has a production cruiser right outside the ma uh, right outside my base. He's coming in for a bit of a backstab there. So I've pulled back my LAVs, and I'm just going to try and buy myself the time until AAV fabrication is finished. And boom, there we go. As soon as it's done, begin producing AAVs. And this is very important. Research heavy vehicle armor one as soon as possible. Now I find it's most efficient to do that after you've built two. If you do all of these things in order, it lines up really nicely. Three AAV, three LAVs, queue up two AAVs, hit heavy armor level one, and then you'll be able to queue up a third AAV as soon as you have the resources after that. Now the great thing about this build is it's very aggressive, and it's going to do a lot of damage to your opponent. However, it is also very effective at holding a rush. As we can see, my opponent is coming in for some sand skimmer harassment. He spotted the AAVs, and that has completely shut this down. Now that you've seen them off, go ahead and send all three of your AAVs right through the middle, directly to your opponent's main resourcing location. Now the next thing you're going to do is you're going to just wait until you have 200 RUs, and the minute you have 200 RUs, research fighter and gunship fabrication. Once you have fighter and gunship fabrication going, you should have a fair amount of excess um, CUs. You can see there I've hit fighter and gunship fabrication. I'm pushing through mid with my uh, AAVs. <clears throat> and of course, I've said it before, I will say it again, expand while you're attacking. So now that my AAVs are going to come out to do some economic harassment, I'm going to save up 600 and build a support cruiser. This will allow me to leave my support cruiser at home move my carrier up to a second resourcing location, and I'll be mining fully off of two resource locations. And I have three AAVs with armor level one. Moving in, and what you're gonna wanna do is ignore everything else on the map. If he's attacking you with units, ignore them. Go straight for his salvagers. Now grab all your AAVs, target one salvager and hold shift, and just click on all the other salvagers. Can you smoke on the carrier? See here, I've used smoke to prevent the carrier from firing uh, on my AAVs. Ha! I never even noticed that. He used some mines. That's all right. I've already killed four salvagers. I'm going to clean up the rest here. They do have railguns, so 
So use some smoke to buy your AAVs time. These AAVs are expendable though. All you care about is doing economic damage. Back at home, you can see that my support cruiser just finished building. I'm moving my carrier out to my second resource location and I'm beginning to produce strike fighters. You want to produce six strike fighters, okay? That is your goal. Three LAVs, three AAVs, six strike fighters. The reason you want six is what we are gonna do is we are going to snipe their production cruiser, okay? Now you can do this with five. However, six is slightly more effective because you will kill the production cruiser much faster and that will prevent you from potentially losing a strike fighter to the production cruiser's anti-air. While my strike fighters are building, I'm going to get carry, upgrade carrier production because at this point, we have noticed that my opponent has gone for railguns wisely. Basically, you're going to force them to go into railguns. And because all of the tech that you've been researching is so RU heavy, you're going to find that you have a bank of CUs. You want to dump those into LAVs. Okay? The enemy is counterattacking, and this is a pretty strong counterattack. So what I need to do is... This is not ideal, um, but if you have to, use your strike fighters to push off any counterattack. It isn't ideal because then you're showing your hand, right? And you don't want to show your hand. However, if you have to do it, do it. And just continue pumping out LAVs, uh, and use your carrier and your LAVs to hold off uh, this attack. I might lose a salvager, but that's okay. At this point, we have done a significant, significant amount of economic damage. Well, I think we killed like six or seven salvagers, which is absolutely crazy. Um, and that just goes to show how powerful these armor upgrades are. Never, ever, ever underestimate how powerful armor upgrades are. They will really, really allow your units to stay in combat for much, much longer. So now that we have our first well, our, our basic starting um, strategy has been executed. Uh, momentarily, we're going to launch our strike fighters and we're going to snipe one of their production cruisers. Um, now we can basically safely transition to a macro mode. We've done a serious amount of economic damage. We are about to cripple their production capability, so we can safely transition into macro. So with that in mind, I'm researching railgun fabrication and I'm going to start pumping out AAVs and railguns. Okay? Now I'm launching my strike fighters. What you want to do is you want to make sure they're not attacking units on the way. So I like to launch them somewhere across the map, like over here or over here. And then once they're in the air, grab them all and target them onto a production cruiser. Beautiful thing about this build is you, if you execute it correctly, you are going to cripple your opponent's economy. You are going to cripple their production capability, and you are going to force them to invest in very expensive tech, which is going to allow you to maintain a macro advantage. We have forced them with our AAVs to produce railguns, and with our strike fighters to produce missile ships. Now, both of those are expensive units and expensive tech paths. So this is going to allow us to transition out of this aggression into a very strong macro game. With that in mind, again, attack while you're, expand while you're attacking. While I launched my strike fighters and sent my LAVs into attack, I built another support cruiser. That's going to allow me to leave that support cruiser at my second resource location and bring my carrier out and expand to a third resource location. And now, at this point in the game, I'm transitioning into full macro mode. I'm going. I've lost three strike fighters. But that's okay, I'm going to rebuild them, and I'm going to just continuously pump out AAVs, railguns, and strike fighters. <clears throat> Pardon me. At this point in the game, we are looking pretty damn strong. Uh, we caused a massive amount of casualties to their salvagers on their main mining location with our AAV push. Our strike fighters killed one of their production cruisers. And now we are right inside their home territory and we're just making a huge, huge number of units and just sending them over and continuously attacking, continuously keeping that pressure on. And again, at this point, how you want to transition out of this is up to you. You don't have to go with, um, beyond the first AAV strike and into your strike fighter strike, you don't need to 
really stay with AAVs. You don't need to transition into railguns. I do recommend dumping your excess CUs into LAVs. LAVs are great for keeping map control uh, and constantly just harassing your enemy and keeping them off balance. <clears throat> Pardon me. But you can really, at this point, you're sitting on a three base economy. You can transition into any kind of unit composition you like. You can go for battle cruisers, artillery. Uh, you can continue spamming air units and just overwhelm them with air. Whatever you like. Um, I've decided to go for AAVs and railguns because I think it's a very, very strong composition. Um, your AAVs will protect your railguns from being sniped by sand skimmers unless you get them out of position like I have. Your railguns are going to be the primary source of your DPS. And if you can, continue to always have six strike fighters in your hangar. Because you want to continually use these strike fighters to snipe their production cruisers and keep crippling their economy. <clears throat> Light attack vehicle in service. Now, I wasn't able to do that because I noticed that uh, my opponent had deployed some missile ships here in a very nice position. It's really, really good, strong positioning on these missile ships. It's kind of going to help protect both of his production cruisers. I know that he has one over here, and he probably has replaced this one by this point in time. So I'm forced to bring my strike fighters back, and instead I'm going to go send them to continuously attack my opponent's economy. Okay? That's the name of this build order. You want to constantly damage your opponent's economy and their production capability. If you execute this build properly, you can just cause such an insane amount of damage to them that they'll never be able to catch up with you. Right? Once again, I'm dumping all my excess CUs into LAVs. I've got a pretty strong position on this side of the map. My opponent is most definitely not out of the game yet. Um, he's got a pretty damn good push here. This is going to clean up the majority of my force on this side. Uh, assault railguns are very, very powerful, especially when fighting in tight terrain like that. Look at that. Just a few assault railguns was able to really do a significant amount of damage to my forces. It's going to force me to produce tons. Look at all these LAVs, man. So many. But that's because I'm floating a lot of CUs, right? So you never want to float resources. Always build more units. <clears throat> and now that we're on a full three base economy, you can afford to send wave after wave of LAVs. And so pretty much the rest of this game is going to play out in a pretty standard fashion. Um, we're going to have pretty standard unit compositions on both sides. And it's going to transition into a nice macro game. But the thing about this build order is if you don't kill your opponent outright, which is very possible, you can totally end the game. Um, if you don't kill them outright, you're just going to have such an uncontrollable macro advantage that you will be able to really, really take control of this game. Uh, and you'll box your opponent in. They're going to be worried about air strikes, so they're going to have to invest in anti-air. I've also built a gunship. I like gunships, so I'm going to use my gunship to uh, continuously attack my opponent's economy while my strike fighters come in and snipe their production cruisers. Now that I've cleaned out those missile ships, production cruisers are wide open. I've cleaned up all their assault railguns with LAVs. Oh, okay, I'm going to go for that one. Oh, a little bit of a misclick, it seems. I'm targeting the salvager. Anyway, that's not what you want to do. Uh, that's a mistake, so always target. Ignore their salvagers with your strike fighters. Always target their production cruisers. And at this point, it looks like the game pretty much is ours. We were able to clean up both of our opponent's remaining production cruisers. Uh, and we have a dominant position on the map. Now I'm just streaming out more and more units onto the map, more AAVs, more railguns. I've built a third production or support cruiser so that I can upgrade my carrier's power and bring it into the fight. Now our opponent has got an honor guard cruiser on the field and that's going to cause a little bit of trouble for me. It's going to make it really hard for me to push in, but um, 
let's not let's not get too worried about it at this point because the game is ours um, our opponent is just hanging on so yeah at this point the game's over and we have totally won so just to reiterate what this build order is is saturate your main with six salvagers I put three starting on CUs. I'm just going to say this over again as this final battle of the game is underway. It's, it doesn't really matter. It's just an honor guard cruiser, so uh, we're just going to have some like some combat going on between the Galveston carrier and honor guard cruiser and my gigantic army, so it's not really that important. Um, three salvagers on CUs, one on RUs. Queue up. Four more salvagers. Rally them onto the RUs. And then send the so you'll have three, four, five, six. Okay? Three on CUs, two on RUs, uh, and then a fourth on CUs. And then your next two are going to come up to your uh, next wreck bulkhead, one on each, CUs and RUs. Then you're going to research LAV fabrication, build three LAVs, get AAV fabrication, build three AAVs, and get armor level one. <clears throat> Once you send your AAVs out to attack, target their salvagers and build a support cruiser, expand, and then immediately research strike fighter fabrication and snipe their production cruisers. Okay? And that'll allow you to expand safely to a third location and just take an uncontrollable macro advantage into this game. I mean, I've even got battle cruisers coming onto the field here. Sadly, this battle cruiser came out a little bit early. I had intended for it to come out when I was right on top of the carrier, but at this point in the game, it's very much over. So, I hope this video was helpful. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, don't hesitate to leave them there. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, smash that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and I will see you again for the next video. Peace out.